Welcome back, guys. This is Tough Choice. I am your host, Kazim Rahman, on the hot seat today. Again, one of these deep dive episodes, it is me. We will go through uh, some Would You Rathers, and then we'll do a Black Excellence section, and then we'll close it out. Um, Guys, you know how we do it here. We don't really waste any time. The game is Tough Choice. I must pick between the two choices. You get one pass, you get one pause. Let's begin. (laughs) Let it begin. Let it begin. Would you rather masturbate in front of everyone you know or stick your hand in a wasp nest for 15 minutes? All right. Pros and cons, right? Let's start with the masturbation in front of everyone I know. Masturbating in front of everyone I know, one time. That's one time. That's a pro. The con, I know a lot of people. I know, I don't, I'm not going to lie and say I know like a football stadium of people, but I know a pretty big theater full of people. Like I know an arena of people. Well, actually, you know what? If you say people I know, that's not a lot. If we're, okay, let's break it down now. So what do we mean by when, we, what do we mean when we say people we know? Okay. If we're talking about friends that I like talk to, if we're talking about just people I know, like including people in passing, that's a, that can be a, that can be an arena sized um, masturbation session. But if it's just people that I talk to, my friends, my family, that's like a small theater and I can masturbate in front of them. Mm, does it say masturbate to completion? That's a good question. That's a good question. I know that some people are asking themselves, yes, you know what it means. If it says masturbate in front of everyone, you know, I mean, when you masturbate, do you, do you, you plan on finishing, right? So yeah, it says masturbate in front of everyone, you know, that's the, that's the, that's, that's what's going to happen. Now, how many people do I know? I, I'm going to say it's everyone I know in pa- everyone I know, excluding people that I just know of or know in passing, people that I know, people that I've had conversations with. That would be a, an extremely large theater sized full of people, right? And, ah, and you're masturbating in front of your mom, your parents, your grandparents, your family. I can masturbate in front of my friends and strangers and people that I'm just cool with, no problem. But if I have to masturbate in front of my family, that's a problem. Now, stick your hand in a wasp's nest for 15 minutes. Wow, that's one time too. But I don't know if you've ever been stung by a bee. I've been stung by a bee. And a bee sting is, how do I character? I don't know how to explain what a bee sting is. Let's just say you're being pinched by with metal pliers for at least 10 minutes. That's a bee sting, all right? It's not comfortable. And we're not even talking about bees right now. A bee is small. A wasp is pretty damn big. A wasp is pretty damn big. And you're telling me I have to stick my hand in a wasp nest for 15 minutes straight? Because think of it this way. You're thinking about, see, and here's why we have to do the deep dive questions. Because a lot of you are saying, oh, stick my hand in a wasp nest. Then my hand will be messed up. You're just thinking about your hand. Why wouldn't the wasp come after your whole body? Think about that. I stick my hand in a wasp nest. I don't think they're just going to go for my hand. I'm pretty sure they're going to fly out of the nest and start attacking my face and start attacking my legs and start attacking every part of my body that's exposed. Why would I want to do that? I'm going to have to masturbate. You're going to have to masturbate in this situation because the wasp nest, 15 minutes, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. But you will get fucked up. Does that make sense? You will get fucked up, not beyond recognition, but man, your face is going to be messed up for a while. Or, or, and just hear me out, okay, you can just whip your dick out in front of everyone you know and just masturbate. Close your eyes, right? It doesn't say that you can't have some help. You can have your laptop in front of you, put on a nice video, light some candles, Set a mood. You can set a mood when you masturbate in front of everyone you know, right? You can have the stage full of candles, right? You can have Kanye West open for you just to do a couple songs, right? Just to get you in the mood, right? Just like stadium music, right? And after, for your closer, you don't have to do an encore. You do not have to do an encore when you masturbate in front of everyone you know. But should you have a closing act? Probably. You just masturbated, right? You should have probably some magician 
I'm thinking you can't have a stand-up comedian. That's you don't want to put people in a hole like that. Or, or how about this? Okay, here's what I'll do. I'm going to masturbate in front of everyone I know. For my opening act, I'll have a stand-up comedian just to warm the crowd up. You know, you want to get them loose, right? And then what I'm he's gonna do or she, I'm equal opportunity here. He or she is going to do 15 minutes of comedy up top, right? And then what I'll do, and here's what people don't understand, you got to get a poet. You get a poet to say some romantic things to get people really in the mood for this masturbation. And then I come out, I masturbate, candles everywhere, and we're going to leave the candles on because at the end of my masturbation, a solo performance from one, the only Kanye West. Just saying. That's how I would masturbate in front of everyone I know. You got to make it an event so people don't just say, because he masturbated in front of everybody. It was kind of weird. And then people will go out and say, yo, if you haven't seen the Kazim masturbation show, what are you doing with your life? That's what I want to do. Would you rather reply to every question? Reply. (laughs) God dang it. I can't read. Reply to questions using only Bible scriptures or be Amish and on the FBI's most wanted list. Pros and cons. We got to do pros and cons. Reply to questions using only Bible scriptures. I am not Christian. I was born and raised in a Muslim household, Nigerian Muslim household. So I wouldn't, I don't know the Bible like that. I don't know how, listen, I, I, I can, listen, if it's, if it's any Abrahamic text, then I can figure out how to reply to questions using only Bible scriptures. And here's the thing, because here on Tough Choice, we all know the question is the question, right? The question is the question and reply to questions using only Bible scriptures does not mean you can't have a conversation. But whenever someone asks you a question, you have to reply using a Bible scripture. So in the first year and a half, I'll have to have a Bible on me at all times. I'll have to have a Bible in my car. I'll have to have a Bible at work. I'll have to have a Bible app on my phone. Right. If I'm going to reply to these questions using Bible scriptures, I'd have to I, I'd have to figure it out. But how do I answer every question using Bible scripture? I don't know. I would have to I would have to do a lot of research beforehand. And just anticipate questions. Right now, be Amish and on the FBI's most wanted list. Mm, honestly, those could have been two separate situations. You can say be Amish as one situation, and then you can say be on the FBI's most wanted list as one situation. But now you have to be Amish and be on the FBI's most wanted list. Here's the thing. In all fairness, if you're Amish and you're on the FBI's most wanted list, it's very it's unlikely that they'll find you unless they know you're Amish. I'm assuming, because I'm not Amish now, I'm assuming I'd be on the FBI's most wanted list and then I would become Amish. And then I would just live with Amish people. For those of you who don't understand what it means to live as if you're Amish, you, there is no technology. There is no, this, yeah, actually, that's it. There's no technology. Think of it that way. There's no cell phone. There's no internet. There's no cars. It's horse and buggy. Horse and buggy. At the same time, man, they make their own butter and I've had Amish butter. Yo, stay Amish. Let's just put it that way. If you're Amish and you're listening to this, you probably shouldn't be listening to this, but you're probably doing that little teenage thing where they let you wild out for like a year and then you have to decide whether or not you're going to be Amish or be excommunicated. If you're listening to this, be Amish or go get me that butter, send it to me, email me for my address, toughchoice at outlook.com. That's toughchoice at outlook.com. Just say Amish butter and I'll know exactly what you're talking about in the subject line. If I'm on the FBI most wanted list and I'm Amish, I'm, I can probably be perfectly fine. I'll be perfectly fine. But I wouldn't live the life that I want to live. Even if I was Amish. Honestly, if I was on the FBI most wanted list, I could still live my life. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to lie. I think about it. Everyone thinks about it. Everyone thinks about if they're on the FBI's most wanted list, what are you going to do? 
because I have an idea of what I want to do, but I don't really like no, no, but I have an idea of what I want to do. Man, this is hard. I'm going to do the Bible scriptures because if I'm Amish, I'm not going to be able to live the life that I want to live. And that's why. That's the only, that's the only reason. And honestly, it has absolutely nothing to do with the FBI's most wanted list. I just don't want to be Amish. Would you rather have hairy gums or only be able to blow your nose using a stranger's used tissue? That is disgusting. At the same time, hairy gums is very disgusting also. Pros and cons. Hear me out. If I have hairy gums, it's not that bad. It's bad, but it's not that bad. I'm assuming, well, it depends because I'm not a hairy person, right? I have very thin body hair. I have hair on my face, hair on my head, but the hair on my body is extremely thin. Like it looks like I shave my legs from afar, but I really don't. I just have really thin hair. Okay. So if it's just the hair on my arm, then I'm fine with having the hairy gums. But knowing me, knowing how I write this question, it's probably going to be hair hair. Like, I would say maybe like pubic hair, but ugh, I don't know. But I think if I had hairy gums, I would get used to it eventually. You know, it would suck for the first month, month and a half. I would figure out what I should be eating, how I should be eating, how I need to really condition my gums hair. And then, you know, I would figure it out. But I think I'd get used to it eventually, okay? Only be able to blow your nose using a stranger's used tissue. That, listen, I won't die if I use a stranger's used tissue. Let's be honest. I won't die. You might get sick, but I won't die. At the same time, I'm going to want to run into traffic. I'm going to want to, like, die, die. You know what I mean? Because if I have to go find a stranger and get a used tissue every time I have to blow my nose, one, I'm not going to lie, I don't get sick like that. I eat pretty healthy. I exercise every day. I take lots of vitamins. But man, when I get sick, I need to blow that nose. And if I have to go find a stranger and, and use their used tissue, I don't think I could live that life. Even, even though I only get sick, possibly... Let's say I only get sick like twice a year. 365 days, I get sick 10 of those days. Really? Really? I get sick 10 of those days. 365, I get sick 10 of those days. But if for 10 days out of the year, I can only blow my nose using a stranger's used tissue, it might as well be 365. It might as well be 365. I'm going to have to do these hairy gums. I have to. You got to do the hairy gums only because, listen, someone will love you. I understand what, you, what you're probably thinking. Who the hell is going to be with me if I have hairy gums? At the same time, there are lots of women out there that like a guy who's unique. You know what I mean? Like they like, they like the, oh my goodness, he has a, like a, a lazy eye. It's fine. He's special. He's a nice guy. He has a nice personality. He has money. He has money. He has money. You can't be, you can't have hairy gums and be poor. I'm sorry. You can't. Come on now. You can be shallow or you can be materialistic. That is rule number three. You can't be both. So you got to be materialistic and you got to bring the big bucks. You got to go back to school. You got to get an MBA. You got to get a master's degree. You got to be like an engineer or something. If you're going to have hairy gums, you can't be broke. You can't because you have to have something to distract from the hairy gums because it's weird. Would you rather find out both your parents are porn stars or let each of your friends choose a tattoo to put anywhere on you? All right. Okay. This is, this is hard, but it's not harder than I thought it would be, if that makes sense. Okay. Pros and cons. Find out both your parents are porn stars. Listen, my parents are in their 60s. They are retired. But if I find out now that they're porn stars, part of me, part of me, and I'll be totally honest, part of me will be 90% of me. I'll say, I'll say that. 90% of me will be ashamed, will be disgusted, 
will be confused, will be angry, will be upset. 90% of me, if my parents turn out to be porn stars in their 60s, 10% of me will be like, hey, yo, man, that's what, that's what my family does. That's what the, listen, the Ramon family is, we're innovative, right? We, we, we always chase the bag. And if they're getting money doing porn star stuff, 10% of me is going to be like, hey, man, get your bag, man. Let them get the bag. That's fine. Secure the bag at all times. Understandable. But I mean, 90% of me is going to be like, yo, you need to stop. If your parents are porn stars, it's not affecting you directly. I just, I'll just say that. And if we're being, we have to be honest with ourselves. It, it'll affect you like um, maybe for like three months at the most, right? Because here's the thing. No one's going to say your parents are porn stars. No one's going to come up to you and be like, yo, your parents are porn stars. And I can just be like, yo, why the fuck are you watching 60 year olds? What, what are you doing? So it's not, I don't see it as a problem, but some people might see it as a problem. Now, let each of your friends choose a tattoo to put anywhere on you. Okay. And this is why I'm choosing the porn stars because my friends, are the worst human beings in the history of friendship. There's no way. There is no way. There is no way. I am letting any of my friends choose a tattoo. One, choose a tattoo and put it anywhere on my body. Three of my friends will definitely put it on my face. Three of them will put it on my face. Two of them will say, yo, let's just put two on his ass right quick, right? Four of them will be like, yo, your dick needs to get tattooed, bro. And I'm going to be like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Why, why are you guys like this? And they're going to be like, hey, man, you read the card you, you chose. It's your game. You chose. I cannot let my friends choose a tattoo to put on me. That's never going to happen. I don't trust people like that. And you shouldn't trust anyone to do that. You shouldn't trust any. Well, here's the thing, actually. This is just, this goes back to the, a simple question. Are your friends good people? Are your friends good people? If my friends were good people, I would know that, hey, I'm going to choose them and they're going to put it on my arm. They're going to put it under my arm. They're going to put it on like my calf muscle or something like that. Something a little classy, right? Or maybe they'd let me have a sleeve of tattoos. That'd be nice. But are my friends good people? If I ask myself that question, the answer is no, 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 no. There's no way I will let my parents be porn stars. And I'm just not one. I'm not going to talk about it Two, It's highly doubtful. They're going to use their real names. Porn stars don't use their real names, right? They're in their sixties. So they're not going to be that super famous. If someone sees me with my parents out and about, they're not gonna, they're, they're gonna maybe second look, they're gonna maybe get like a second look, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna say anything. No, I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't say anything if I found out my friend's dad was a porn star. Would I say something? Of course not. That's insane. That's insane. I would never say anything. Never. Guys, now it is time for Black Excellence. I'm gonna pose a situation. And then I will decide whether or not I think it's going to be billionaire Oprah Winfrey or the 44th president of these United States, Barack Hussein Obama. Who would be the first to die if tonight turned into a horror movie? Listen, I'm just going off of weight. The answer is Oprah. All right. If we're just going off pure weight, the answer is Oprah. Oprah is older than Obama. So... One, she's older. Two, she's just a little heavier. Three, I don't think she exercises like that. Obama at least plays basketball. We've seen him. We've seen him play basketball. At the very least, he plays basketball. He like paddle boards sometimes, right? So if tonight turned into a horror movie, Oprah's going to die. Who skips down the street when no one is looking? Obama. Oh, happy ass. Obama definitely skips down the street when no one is looking. I don't think Oprah... I don't think Oprah walks in the sense that I'm pretty sure no matter what, 
or where Oprah needs to go, she gets in a Rolls Royce and goes. Does that make sense? Or she pays someone to carry her. There, I don't. I genuinely don't think Oprah walks unless it's like a red carpet or something like that. You know, I don't. I'm pretty sure it's Obama who's skipping. Who is most easily seduced? Who? I don't know. Who is most easily seduced? I want to say, based on money, I want to say Obama is most easily seduced only because Oprah is a billionaire. And I don't think, I think once you reach a, that level of money, you're not easily seduced by anything, right? You need that kinky stuff to be seduced, right? And Obama's, Obama, she, he got money. I mean, he gets the presidential pension, of course, but he doesn't have Oprah money. So I'm pretty sure he's out here just getting seduced. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, I, I'll get seduced by things Obama will get seduced by because I don't have money like that. But Oprah, you think Oprah will get easily seduced? Nah, um, I don't think, I don't think that. Who will win the lottery but lose the ticket? Man, I know some of you will think um, Obama will win the lottery and lose the ticket, but I don't think Michelle would allow him to do that. I don't think Michelle would allow him to do that. Oprah would win the lottery, lose the ticket, and then just think, oh, it was the manifestation. It was just, you know, if it's not for you, then it's not meant for you. Shut the fuck up, Oprah. You lost the lottery ticket. What are you doing? Obama, there's no way Michelle's going to let Obama lose a lottery ticket if, he, if he's playing the lotto. You put it on the fridge, right? And then you wait for the numbers to be called. Who would win in a hot dog eating contest? Okay. Some of you are young and you're going to say, oh, Oprah would win in a hot dog eating contest. All right? Just because she's big. And that's disrespectful. You should be ashamed of yourself. You would be, you would have a point. but. It's very disrespectful and you should be ashamed of yourself. So if you do a little research, right? And what I've done is I've actually seen hot dog eating contests in the past because it was a very, it was a very big thing in like the 90s. I don't even think they do it anymore. A ridiculous thing in the 90s and the early 2000s were eating contests, right? So... What people did is like, oh, who can eat the most amount of donuts? Who can eat the most, you know, amount of chicken wings? Who can eat the most amount of insert food item and in the, in the shortest amount of time? And the most popular of the eating contests was a hot dog eating contest. And the thing about the hot dog eating contest, if you go back in time and look, who wins these contests? Who really wins the hot dog eating contest? It is not the fat person. It's never a fat person that wins a hot dog eating contest. It's either a super skinny Asian or a kind of chubby white male. Black people don't do hot dog. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Black people do not do hot dog eating contests. You know how it is, right? We're not, we're not eating... 40 hot dogs in a sitting. That's weird. But the skinny people usually dominate. So that's why I'm going with Obama. You got to go with Obama on this one because, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like Obama would figure it out. Last one. Who would eat a baby if they were stranded with one on a desert island? Guys. Guys, come on. We know it's Oprah. We don't want to say it's Oprah. We don't want to say it's Oprah. But we know it's Oprah. And it's not because she's big. It has nothing to do about that. But Oprah's a billionaire. And you don't become a billionaire without doing some evil shit. And I'm, I, I don't want to say Oprah. Or we'll say allegedly. We'll say allegedly. I don't want to say Oprah has eaten a baby. But would you really be surprised if you heard that Oprah allegedly ate a baby? Would you really be surprised? I wouldn't be surprised. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised. Billionaires do some weird shit. Guys, that is the end of Black Amazing. Excellence. Great is great. Excellent. Perfect. Amazing. Let's continue. Would you rather have no toilet in your house or 
have a 50% chance of always having a dead mouse in your food. Oof, that is not something that I would be, neither one of those things I, I, I want. Neither one of those things. Pros and cons. Have no toilet in your house. Okay, okay. That is not good. Also, I work from home, so I, need a, I would need a toilet. I could possibly go to the 7-Eleven down the street. I could possibly pee in like a bottle, but where am I going to actually like take a dump? You know what I mean? I can't take a dump in like a litter box, right? And also when people come visit, where are they going to pee? You know what I mean? So there are, at the same time, I mean, listen, if we're being honest, I could figure out how to have no toilet for me, if it was just me living here, and right now it is just me living here, I can figure out how to have a toilet for me. Yes, that's not hard. I can figure it out. I can pee in the shower. Let's be honest. I can pee in the shower. I, I don't know what I'm going to shit, but I can pee in the shower. And if I need to shit, I can go. I can, I can have a deal with my neighbor, one of my neighbors or two of my neighbors. Like, listen. I'll give you such and such amount of money a month and you tell me when I can just take dumps in your apartment. I can figure it out. That's all I'm saying. Now, have a 50% chance of always having a dead mouse in your food. Now, listen to this option carefully. Have a 50% chance of always having a dead mouse in your food. This does not mean out of 10 meals, five meals will have a mouse, okay? It means for every meal, you flip a coin and it's either mouse or no mouse. And that's very different than a 50% chance of all your meals having a dead mouse. It's a 50% chance of each meal having a dead mouse which means the, 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 the probabilities of having a dead mouse are much higher. Much, 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 much higher, right? And if you're not, let's say, let's say each meal, you flip a coin. If it's heads, you get no mouse. If it's tails, you get mouse. So there'll be some days where, you know, breakfast, mouse, lunch, Mouse, no, breakfast, mouse, lunch, no mouse, snack, and dinner, no mouse. There'll be some days. And then there'll be some days where breakfast, mouse, lunch, mouse, dinner, mouse, the next day, breakfast, mouse, lunch, mouse, dinner, mouse, the next day, breakfast, mouse, lunch, mouse, dinner, mouse. I'm thinking I'm going to get a mouse every time. I'm never lucky when I need to flip a coin. I'm never lucky when I need to flip a coin. At the same time, you have a dead mouse in your food. It doesn't mean that you're, you find the dead mouse before, um, before it's too late, right? You see the dead mouse in your food. It's going to suck, but you can just throw it away and order new food or make new food. You can just throw it. It doesn't say you have to eat the food. It does not say you have to eat the food. So for that, I will do the mouse. I will do the mouse, right? And I, I'm assuming I just get, I just flip a coin. If it's heads, I'm safe. If it's tails, I got I to gotta figure out this mouse situation. All right? Because I can't have no toilet. I work from home. I can't have no toilet. I can't. And then I don't think any of my neighbors will allow me to, to take dumps in their apartment. Even if I, even if I paid them, even if I explained the curse that I was under through Tough Choice with Kazim Rahman. Hashtag Tough Choice. I don't think they'll understand. Last one. Would you rather have an upside down nose or have to wear the same outfit as your mom every single day? Oof. Listen, I can't. My mom is in her 60s, right? So... 
sometimes she and she's ah, she's like a girly girl too so she still wears like dresses and stuff i can't i can't i can't we're not even gonna do we're not even gonna do pros and cons for this i'm not wearing well the only pro for for wearing the same outfit as your mom every day is that you don't have an upside down nose and the only pro for wearing the for having the upside down nose is that you don't um have to wear the same clothes as your mom every day the same outfit. Sometimes she's wearing pants, but sometimes she's wearing like these these dresses or like the, she's Nigerian. So she like to wear African clothing as well. And it's like, oh, I don't I don't want to do that. I really don't. I'm going to do the upside down nose. I'm going to get I'm going to carry around an umbrella. Right. For when it rains, I'm going to wear a cap at all times. Right. Again, someone will love me. Someone will figure it out. Someone will figure out their own, you know, I've got, someone will someone will figure out that they love me, and at the same time, you you gotta make money if you're gonna have an upside down nose, right? You gotta be shallow in this. You got no, not shallow. You gotta be materialistic in this. You gotta make money. If you're gonna have an upside down nose and you're broke. Oof, you can't. You can't. You can't. Anyway, guys, that is our episode. This has been Tough Choice with Kazim Rahman. I've been Kazim Rahman. You can find me online at Kazim Comedy. That's K-A-Z-E-E-M Comedy. Like, share, subscribe to this podcast. We're growing and we love it. If you have a Tough Choice question or a Mary Fuck Kill you want us to consider, email toughchoice at outlook.com. That is toughchoice at outlook.com. I've been Kazim Rahman. You guys have been amazing. Thanks. Thanks.